How are you guys? This is CP Cards and Dice. Welcome to Tabletop Baseball TV, and uh, we're doing a deep drive baseball tutorial. It's called Endurance Explained. So first of all, I want to go over, and this is a short 15 minute, and we've already wasted about a minute, so we've got 14 minutes left. And first I want to read uh, the actual one-page rule book, and I want to go over that. And I want to not only explain what it says, but I want to offer a perspective on what is said. I think that's critical, right? And so the perspective is going to help you, I think, understand it better than the actual words. And that's what I've learned from playing multiple games. If I understand the meaning, it's easier for me to understand uh, the actual language versus understanding the language and try to, trying to extract the meaning. So anyway. Um, let's look at endurance. Endurance is a little bit tricky because it's got it's got a lot of moving parts, right? That it's called here. It's called batter, uh, not endurance. Excuse me. Um, and I think this is. Let's see. Was this? This is. Uh, wait a second. Wait a second. What's this one called? I think I called it endurance. Let me let me, let me go back. First of all, this thing's acting up. All right, so this is not endurance at all. Um, this one, I've already done endurance. I'm sorry. This is splits. This is splits explained. So I'm going into splits, and then I'll change the title of this thing. Hey there, man. Philip, how are you? So let me go into splits real quick on deep drive baseball. And uh, pitcher batter splits. Some cards have a circle, right, around the letter. Now, to do this, I'm going to use a modern teams because it's more prevalent in the modern era than it is in the, like, 70s, for example. There are still guys with uh, – so, so uh, here are the – wait a second. Let me, let me grab a team that, uh, that I'm comfortable with, like the Mets, okay? So the Mets, let's see who they have. Dominic Smith, see that? He's a lefty with a circle. What does that mean? Well, it basically means he shouldn't be batting against lefties. Let's read what it says. All right, a batter advantage exists, one, if a pitcher is fatigued. Okay, fair enough. If a left-handed specialist batter, which that's what Dominic Smith is, a left-handed specialist batter, right, faces a right-handed specialist pitcher. I'll tell you right now, it's not going to happen. So don't even worry about it. Um, a right-handed specialist batter faces a left-handed specialist pitcher. Guess what? Very doubtful that that happens. Four, A. Now, this is uh, – I had trouble with this part. Uh, team at bat is trailing with a potential tying run on base or at bat. A relief pitcher is on the mound. And C, the pitching team has a closer available – who has a high enough endurance that he could potentially pitch the remaining innings of the game. In other words, this rule is meant for those guys that try to basically game the system and they have a guy with like a one ERA who wasn't the closer, but their closer has a three and a half ERA. And they're like, no, I'm going to use this guy with a one ERA rather than the guy with a 350 ERA who was the actual closer and who had all the saves and who came in there and blew some saves, right? Like, for example, Edwin Diaz, terrible guy with a six ERA, but he was their closer. So this is so guys don't game the season, uh, the, the system. That's why that that uh, that game is in play. All right. Um, okay, so that's the first part. That's the batter advantage. So um, I don't think batters are going to have very many advantages, to be honest with you. What you're going to have to avoid as a manager is disadvantages for the batter. And that's where the next part comes in. Okay. Pitcher advantage exists, one, if a left-handed specialist batter faces a left-handed pitcher. So this is your left-handed specialist batter versus – and I'm looking through the uh, – ah, Brian Moran, Moran, right? Brian Moran, he's a lefty specialist pitcher. So it says um, a left-handed special. So a pitcher advantage exists 
if a left-handed specialist batter faces a left-handed pitcher, which this guy is, he's a left-handed pitcher. A left-handed specialist pitcher faces a left-handed batter. Okay, so he would have, Moran would have an advantage over Dominic Smith, who's a specialist lefty, and Jeff McNeil, who's not a specialist, but is still a lefty. Okay, so if I'm a defensive manager, I'm holding this guy for this one batter, probably McNeil, okay, because he's not going to be a look. Look at his his uh, relief pitching endurance is a zero, meaning that he can only really go, you know, uh, basically an inning, two batters, one batter, one out, two outs. That's it, really what he's going to be able to go. So you want to use this guy just for this one batter, this one lefty. And that's really the loogie, um, a lefty who comes in to face one batter, right? And that's basically what this rule is meant for. Let's go on to uh, number three. A right-handed specialist batter faces a right-handed pitcher. You're not going to see that very much. Very doubtful. I, I've never seen it. A right-handed specialist pitcher faces a right-handed batter. Again, you're not going to see very many right-handed specialist pitchers. I don't. There's not one. Look, look at how many cards you get with the with the uh, Marlins. Why? Because the Marlins had guys up and down all season. But I don't think there's one right-handed specialist in this whole pack. I may be wrong. So why am I going to worry about stuff that's never going to happen? Okay. So what do you need to know? Let me. Let's just see if I'm right or wrong. I don't think there's a righty specialist in this whole 50. Ah, one righty. Devin Marrero, he's a righty specialist. So do not put him up against righties. That's one of the reasons for that circled R or circled L is saying that this guy doesn't face righties. So he may have played the season. He had five at-bats, and he probably all his at-bats were against lefties. So that's one. And here's, oh, this is Devin Marrero, same card twice I printed this set out probably twice so there's one guy so far that we found who's a circled righty and he only has five at bats so you're really not going to use him very much but you should definitely not use him versus righties because he's going to face a disadvantage and that's about it okay so yeah, you know, never really, it's almost impossible to find a righty specialist. And if you do, it's very unusual. Okay. Because mainly because most of the pitchers in the league are righties. All right. So let's go back to analyze this. So basically, your left handed specialist pitcher, okay, is exists to come in and face a left handed batter or a left handed specialist batter. So what do you do? So obviously McNeil was one of the top hitters in the league. I'm not going to pinch hit for him because I get a specialist. Now I could pinch hit for him, but I don't think I am. But for Dominic Smith, I may pinch hit for Dominic Smith. So what I'll do is I'll bring in a Dani Echevarria. So now I'm trying to avoid right the advantage for the defensive manager and the pitcher. And what exactly is that advantage? Well, let's look at that closely here. What is that advantage? And I got I got a terrible pulse again on this. Very frustrating. I moved it. It's still acting up. Let's see. Come on. Why are you doing that? Let's see if you do that. If it goes away, it does not go away. I've probably been going on the whole time. But if you listen to this, it's better. Listen, there's not much to watch anyway. Okay, it's not like uh, there's a lot of action scenes in this movie. Again, it stopped. Oh, started again. All right. So, probably been going on the whole time. All right, I didn't bother to look. I'm sorry. All right, so what do you do? You got to situate. Okay, so what happens if I bring in, what is the advantage for my pitcher? Well, it's a huge advantage because if I roll, right, a, let's see, 
Sometimes it's huge advantage, sometimes it isn't. If I roll a 57 deep drive, right, I can subtract 50, and it goes from a deep drive, which is possibly a home run, to a single. Because minus 50 would be 0, 07, and that would fall into the zero into the single range. See that? So that would be huge. I just robbed Dominic Smith of a home run, and he got a single. Especially in a one-run game, and you just just by bringing in that lefty to face the lefty, that would be huge. Okay, that's why an offensive manager doesn't want his lefty circle, or even his lefty facing a lefty specialist. That's basically the foundation of this whole rule. That's what it's meant to do. That's what it's meant to avoid. So, the circle says this guy should not be facing lefties. A righty with a circle says that righty should not be facing righties. You don't see very many of those, maybe one out of, you know, 100. <clears throat> so the only thing you really have to learn about this rule is that, hey, a lefty with a circle shouldn't face a lefty with a circle. A lefty without a circle shouldn't face a lefty with a circle. <clears throat> That's basically the foundation of this, of this rule. Okay. So what I would do in this case to avoid, so another situation, let's see if, okay, I roll a 95 on Moran's card, and that's a defensive check, which could turn into an error or a hit. Well, I can go minus 50 would go to 45, and 45 is an out. If I had this lefty versus lefty situation in my favor. So what I'm going to do as a offensive manager is I'm going to say, hey, I'm bringing in a Dane Echevarria. This erases the advantage for the lefty, okay? Now, if Adani Chavarria was a righty specialist, then I, he would – the batter. So this is not really meant for the batter to have an advantage over the pitcher. It's more for the loogies on your team. This guy is one of them, right? He had 10, he had 10 appearances. He probably faced only uh, lefties. Well, that's why he exists, just to face lefties. So then if I can now, what I'm doing, right, what I'm doing now is I'm pulling the pitcher. Pulling the pitcher, going to bring a righty in. And that's what I would do in this case, okay? So I just wanted to go over the splits and how that works. Now there's one other factor. If I get this advantage of lefty versus lefty, all my defensive players <clears throat> are going to be a plus one for that matchup. So it's going to help the defense. And it's going to help uh, the pitching as well. So my defense improves. Um, my uh, range improves. And that's the effect, the total effect that bringing in a lefty to face a lefty or a lefty specialist to face a lefty or a lefty specialist to face a lefty specialist batter. That's primarily out of these whole two paragraphs. That paragraph and this paragraph, I guess, two paragraphs out of this whole section. That's all you got to know. This is really meant for lefty versus lefty or lefty specialist versus lefty specialist. So covet, covet your lefty specialist and save them for that moment in the game where the game is on the line and you want to have an advantage or you want to force the hand of the offensive manager into pulling a guy like Dominic Smith who had a pretty good season. Okay, if you look at his home run opportunities, they are very high. Why? Because he only hit 11 home runs, but he hit them in 200 plate appearances. That's an equivalent of a 33 home run year. So that's really, really good. Okay, so you definitely want to pull this guy or get the uh, uh, pitcher that has an advantage off of him. And again, also with Jeff McNeil, a 320 batting average, you want to bring in a lefty specialist or a, le uh, a lefty specialist to face him, has to be a specialist to get the advantage, okay? So the lefty specialist gets an advantage over the lefty and the lefty specialist batter. Lefty batter, lefty specialist batter, and that's really the whole rule. It's And, and, and of course, you get a plus one on your defense for this interaction, okay, this at bat. And that is what all this right here, from here to here, really is meant to describe. There are other smaller factors, so you still have to read it on your own. But to really understand the spirit and the, the, the core of this whole rule, it's really meant to make your 
your loogies valuable to give you a reason to bring in your loogies without turning the whole game into a righty lefty matchup game where everything, you know, it, it, it gear, is geared towards a lefty righty matchup or everything. The whole game hinges on lefty righty matchups, lefty righty matchups. That's the only thing that counts when a lot of times, you know, it's really a real small portion of what counts. You still got lefty batters getting hits off lefty pitchers. Otherwise, you know, it would be nobody would ever score, right? So he, the designer, Chris, didn't want to turn it into a lefty-righty battle throughout, you know. So I'm not about what the game doesn't offer. I'm about explaining what the game does offer and what the perspective is and how you can use it and how you can best understand it. So I hope this uh, tutorial on the splits helped you understand it a little bit. Uh, if the video is really bad because of the pulse was in there, and I should have checked on that when I started, I'll redo the video in the same way again. If guys say, hey, man, I really want to watch that, but the pulse is driving me crazy, um, then I'll just kind of redo it. It's a short video anyway. So I'm going to do another video later on on base running right now. I'm going to go walk my dog. This is CP Cards and Dice from Tabletop Baseball TV. And uh, thanks for stopping by and checking this out. <clears throat> Mm-hmm. <clears throat>